Uh, hi, I'm Lewis Rosenberg, CEO of Unanimous AI, and uh, I'm going to kick off uh, this panel entitled Privacy in the Metaverse uh, with a quick presentation about what I believe are the most important issues uh, around the metaverse. Uh, first, a little background about myself. Um, I've been involved in the metaverse since the early days of virtual and augmented reality. Uh, in fact, this picture is as me in 1992. Uh, developing uh, the first functional augmented reality system at uh, Air Force Research Laboratories, um, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Um, and so I, I've been involved in the metaverse and thinking about the metaverse uh, for over 30 years, uh, but really over the last 10 years, I've started to become quite concerned about uh, the potential uh, negative implications of the metaverse that's being built. And so with all that said, uh, it's worth starting out uh, by just asking, well, what is a metaverse? Uh, I get this question a lot. And uh, the way I describe it at the highest level is that the metaverse uh, really is a societal transition from flat media viewed in the third person to immersive media experienced in the first person. And this is a big deal. This is a change of what, what uh, the experience of the user from being an observer on the outside to a participant on the inside. I think it is also worth really pointing out that there are two types of platforms that uh, will bring the metaverse into our lives. Um, the metaverse can be a, a fully virtual world where uh, people are avatars in this world. Uh, it's like you've seen in terms of advertisements from Meta and other platform providers. Uh, I would call that a, a virtual metaverse. But the metaverse can also be layers of virtual content overlaid on the real world, uh, presented all around us as we go through our daily lives. Uh, that's the augmented metaverse. So. That is the, the context. Uh, this now brings me to what are the risks? <laughs> what are the risks? Well, to me, uh, it's not the technology that I fear about the metaverse. Uh, it's the power that metaverse platforms will have over the lives of consumers. And, and I like to describe this in terms of the three M's of the metaverse, uh, in terms of the dangers. Uh, monitoring users, which is uh, the ability of these platforms to do tracking and profiling. Manipulating users, which is the ability of these platforms to hit us with targeted content, and monetizing users, the ability of these platforms to sell access to each of us to advertisers or, uh, or basically the highest bidder um, based on the monitoring and manipulating that, uh, that they can do. And so this ends up being this dangerous cycle. And it, it's worth pointing this out uh, because we've seen something very similar happen in social media. And so with that said, I want to go through each of these three potential risk areas. Um, the first being monitoring users. In terms of social media, we're all very aware that uh, social media companies can track where you click, track what you buy, track who your friends are. In the metaverse, this is going to become significantly worse. In the metaverse, they're not just going to track where you click and what you buy, they're going to track where you go where you go in a virtual world, also where you go in the real world, uh, in the augmented metaverse. They're going to track what you do. They're going to track who you're with. They're going to track where you look. If you're walking down the street uh, with augmented reality glasses, they're going to know where you're walking. They're going to know uh, what stores you look in as you walk down the street. Uh, they're even going to know how long your gaze lingers uh, on different things. Um, they're going to know, they're going to track your gait. They're going to know where you slow down, where you speed up. In fact, they're going to also monitor your facial expressions. Again, uh, for tracking uh, your emotions, your sentiment, your interest level. They're going to track your vocal inflections. They're going to even track and monitor your vital signs. Um, these technologies are already being built into, uh, into earbuds and other head-worn devices instead of smartwatches so that uh, platforms can monitor your heart rate, monitor your respiration rate, monitor your blood pressure, monitor your pupil dilation, monitor your galvanic skin response, uh, even monitor each EEG, multiple companies uh, building that technology into earbuds. And that's the direction uh, that the metaverse is going in terms of monitoring users. Simply put, the metaverse uh, by its very nature will monitor your whole life. What you do, what you say, what you experience, and uh, by inferring from your vital signs and your facial expressions, what you feel, your emotions uh, will be monitored 
uh, by metaverse platforms. This is a very significant privacy concern, but it's also more than that. It's more than that because of what the platforms will do with this technology. Um, what they will do with it is use it to manipulate users. Uh, they will use it to manipulate users. Uh, and again, we can compare to social media. Social media uses these uh, tracking to do things like targeted advertising, targeted news feeds, targeted member invitations. In the metaverse, it will become even more dangerous. Uh, why? Because the whole point of VR and AR technologies is to fool the senses. It's to blur the boundaries between what's real and what's virtual. And so advertising and propaganda in the metaverse is not going to be pop-up ads and promo videos uh, like we get on social media. In the metaverse, the tools of persuasion will go from flat media to immersive experiences, immersive experiences that are, are more believable, more persuasive, and therefore more dangerous. So what is advertising and propaganda going to look like in the metaverse? Well, uh, I believe there's really two primary categories, virtual product placements and virtual people, AI avatars. Uh, virtual product placements will be targeted experiences that are injected into your world as promotional content by platform providers on behalf of paying advertisers. And again, these will be um, naturally integrated into your experiences. So if you're walking down the street in an augmented world or virtual world, uh, and you might see uh, a car pass you on the street, pass you by, it might look like it's uh, just a natural part of your daily life. And you might not realize like, no, that was placed, that was put there into your world by a paying advertiser uh, to, to influence you. And in fact, other people might not see that car driving by. Maybe only you see it because it was targeting you. And, um, and the, the really dangerous thing is that these virtual product placements, unless regulated, will be indistinguishable from authentic serendipitous encounters. And so as you are going about your life, you know, building up a model of you know, what your community is like, you might think your community is a certain way, but somebody else, a platform provider on behalf of paying advertisers is pulling the strings and manipulating your experiences. That's dangerous. Uh, and that is uh, something that I believe uh, needs to be regulated. And it goes beyond just virtual product placements to, um, to virtual people, AI driven avatars, which again, uh, will be injected into your world on behalf of paying advertisers. Uh, there will be passive experiences where maybe I'm walking down the street in a virtual world or an augmented world and I overhear uh, two avatars having a conversation about a product, about a service, about an idea. I might think, oh, I'm just observing my world. These are just other people in this virtual community and not realize, no, though that, that was placed there on behalf of a paying advertiser for me to observe as a form of persuasion. Uh, it will go beyond this from passive to active, uh, where we'll have AI-driven avatars that ultimately engage you in promotional conversation. Uh, again, they could look like anything else, any other person in your environment. Uh, you engage them in conversation, and you don't might not realize that, uh, no, this was placed there by an advertiser um, as a form of persuasion. Uh, these AI-driven avatars will become indistinguishable from authentic members of the world. Um, they will have data access to your history, the profiles that they've been building up by tracking you, your likes, your wants, your needs, your tendencies, your behaviors. They will have access to that uh, when uh, engaging you in promotional conversation. And they will have the ability to analyze your emotions in real time, your facial expressions, your vocal inflections, your vital signs. Um, this is dangerous. If uh, you know, we, we all are very aware that, that uh, currently AI systems uh, can defeat the world's best Go players and chess players and poker players, um, what chance do we have as consumers if AI-driven avatars engage us in promotional conversation, are monitoring our facial expressions, are modeling, monitoring our blood pressure, have a, access to our full history, and are working to persuade us. Uh, they will be very skilled at uh, 
persuading us to buy things we don't need or believe things that aren't in our best interest. Uh, my view is that they will pitch us more skillfully than any used car salesman, and this is dangerous and should be regulated. Uh, to sum up, my, my concluding remarks is that the metaverse will happen. It will transform society. I personally believe that will happen uh, over the next 10 years. Uh, I think the problems will be similar, but actually much worse than today's social media. And I believe now is the time to think about metaverse regulation uh, because we don't want to have the same thing happen that happened with social media, which is um, by the time people started thinking about regulation, uh, corporations had built an infrastructure and had been using that infrastructure and relying on that infrastructure for a whole decade. And so now it's very difficult to undo the problems. We can avoid that with the metaverse if we think about regulation now before these ecosystems and infrastructures uh, get solidified. Thanks.